Welcome to the Creative Liberty Podcast. I'm your host, Major Chisholm, and this is episode one. And where does life have us now? Man, coronavirus, episode one. I've had a ton of people uh, say that they wanted to be on the podcast, agree to it, and now we're in lockdown. So <laughs> I've actually recorded a few episodes uh, just via phone, and I have... Um, I'm going to release probably all of those at one time. I got to get a few things set up on the back end. By the way, uh, if you're looking for a podcast platform, Anchor is a great podcast platform. Um, Easy to use, easy to set up, and it pushes all of your stuff out uh, to all the the listening platforms. So Spotify, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, you name it. So uh, definitely check them out. Um, So yeah, I've had uh, I've had several people uh, say they would love to be on the podcast, and I've had some people already on. And I'm going to kind of go through my list here of uh, episodes that you can expect in no particular order. I have a master mechanic coming on at some point. Um, He's a retired master mechanic. We're going to talk all things car shop, um, what it takes to become a master mechanic, all those things that I don't know. I know how to do some things with my car, and then there's things that I just, I give up on. Um, I have a woodworker coming on uh, who makes furniture, and I'm, and we're going to definitely promote his business, but um, yeah, I've got a woodworker coming on. I have a probably world-renowned ceramicist. Um, I hope I'm building her up to be a world-renowned ceramicist. Um she is super busy right now, so I'm, I'm trying to pin her down to, uh, to come on the podcast. I have a designer, um, which I've actually, um, I've actually recorded this episode. I'll let that one speak for itself. Um, I have an ultra runner coming on, and uh, I know I, I grew up running, and um, I'm, I'm more of a, a short-distance runner, um, but I grew up doing track and, and field, and um, but this is an ultra runner, and I'm going to ask him, uh, you know, what it's like to be an ultra runner, the time and dedication that goes into that, and just all the stuff that I don't know about ultra running. So um, I've got, uh, I've recorded this episode, um, I've got a birder coming on. Do you know what a birder is? It's not a, it's not a bromy. Uh, that's completely different. Um, common term, bird watcher. And uh, we've already... Uh, recorded this episode and it's f- and that, it's phenomenal and so um, you're going to get to hear from my friend Josh about what it's like to be a birder. I've got a good friend Columbus Cody um, who I've already uh, recorded his podcast and we're going to release it and uh, he is a teacher, a pastor, um, an author and uh, has some other other things on the side. Wears many hats. He's a husband and father probably the, the two best hats he wears. So um, we've already recorded that one. I've got a friend, a couple of friends in Nashville that are going to become Cody's from uh, Columbus. Cody's from Nashville. Got a couple other friends from Nashville who do, uh, fo- one does photography, wet plate collodion photography, and one does video. And so I'm going to get those guys and gals on the podcast to just to talk about creativity. Um, and, and by the way, this is not necessarily a a podcast geared towards the creatives. This is a podcast that is is geared towards creativity, but you don't have to be an artist to be on the podcast. And so it can be an entrepreneur who is building a business who just crunches numbers and things like that. So the, the creative mind, we all have a brain, a left and a right. And so, you know, we, we use both and... So um, if you think you're not creative, you you are to some degree or another. And uh, you'll hear about that coming up in uh, my next episode. But um, so, yeah, so that's those are just some of the people I'm going to have on. And feel free to reach out to me if you'd like to be on the podcast. Um, love to uh, have you on, talk to you about what you do. I'm looking for those people who are kind of at the top of their game, uh, those you know, like the, the trailer says, the masters of their craft, the creative ninjas. So I'm really looking for, for those type of people. Um, uh, let's see. I may have prepared some show notes. Um, oh, today's mystery guest. I almost forgot. Today's mystery guest is myself. 
Good morning, self. Good morning. Glad to be here. It's a beautiful sunny day in Colorado. Um, last week it was in the 60s. Then this weekend it snowed, and now it's gradually creeping back up to the 60s. So um, this is just how we roll this time of year. Uh, last year in May, my wife and I planted our first garden, and it snowed. So we're going to wait until the first of June to actually do that. Flowers and stuff got hit by some snow, but they, they survived, but it's just still not good for them. I have no agenda. I'm sitting here drinking coffee, looking out the window. It's beautiful, sunny outside. My wife and my wonderful dog are still asleep. It's quiet here in the house. The birds are chirping outside. I mean, this is this is just beautiful. Um, so I wanted to talk uh, kind of just where we are right now as a nation um, and as a world. Uh, there's a pandemic going on. And, you know... Stay off Facebook. <laughs> uh, no, I, I love I love Facebook. I I probably um, think of Facebook more as a social experiment for myself than actually caring about what I put on Facebook. Um, I'll usually uh, I'll I'll give up give up my secret here. I usually post three things um, sometimes um, just to see what gets the most likes and hits and, and things like that. Um, it just gives me a, an idea of what people are tuning into. <coughs> Some of the things I post I don't even agree with sometimes, but anyway. Um, but no, on Facebook, everybody's an epidemiologist and uh, a number cruncher, and I'm neither. And so people say wear face masks. People say don't wear face masks. People show examples of the type of face masks that let things out and let things in. So you know what? Um be careful. You don't want to infect others. So care, care for your neighbor, love your neighbor, um, as you do yourself. And if you're going to love yourself well then love others well, um, that's kind of the golden rule. And, um, so my wife and I are, we're hunkered down. We're only going out for the essentials. We'll take the dog out for a walk and we, uh, we'll go drive around. We actually went yesterday and drove around and we were looking for a llama farm. Um, I think we found it. And a couple other places to, to to walk the dog, which is an essential thing under the under the government. So you can take your dog for a walk. Uh, a lot of the parks, uh, trails and stuff um, locally here where I live are open. Uh, you just can't have more than four people in your group. And I'm sorry if my microphone is cutting in and out. I've got to figure out what's going on with that. Um, so yeah, so that's that's kind of what what we're doing. We're just going out for the essentials, and we're getting a lot of stuff done around the house. Um, and I think that's one thing that I just kind of want to I want to kind of pause and talk about. Um, I was talking to I was recording a podcast yesterday, and I was talking to my um, friend Josh about birding and stuff, and and he was talking about when you're out on a hike or where he said he said just slow down and listen, and he's talking about listening for the different types of birds, and he says if you do this often enough, you uh, we'll hear the different type. You will recognize the different types of birds, and it's just a great analogy for life right now. It's just to slow down and listen. A lot of us don't. I mean, I love my wife. We love being together, and so uh, we may have it different from others, um, and I'm, I'm sure we do. We love being together. So this this time has not been a strain on our marriage at all. It's actually grown our marriage, improved our marriage. We love spending time together. Um, and so, but I know for some, having all this time, uh, being at home, um, I know for from personal experience when my dad uh, was home more often, he, he was, uh, he, he quit a job and then was home for a while and my mom was working. And so now there's this strange man in the house during the daytime when we were there and, you know, and it's like, who is he to, discipline us and you know so it caused some strife at first because mom was usually the disciplinarian because she was the one that was home raising us um so i know that these times can be hard uh, especially with personal relationships and, and things like that and and i've seen some memes you know online that just talk about you know hey if you've 
if you're wanting to lose weight and you're not, it's not a lack of time. It's a lack of discipline or you're not starting that side hustle. It's not a lack of time. It's a lack of discipline because you've got all the time now. And that's true to some degree or another, except now that everyone is home, you know, moms and dads have kids to take care of. Or if they don't, then yeah, they may have that extra time to work on stuff. But, you know, um, and some parents are finding that, uh, you know, s- school's still in session at home. And so if school's still in session, then mom is, mom or dad, they're teachers and they're working from home and they're trying to keep the kids quiet while they work. And so there should be some, uh, some grace there for, for some of these memes and stuff that are out there. I do love a good funny meme. I think laughing through hard times is a great way to kind of just deal with some stuff that's going on, find the humor and things, you know, like Mr. Rogers said, look for the, look for the, uh, the people who are, who are, uh, the, oh, and what was the quote? Look for the good ones or the, look for the ones that are helping. I forget. Anyway, I should probably go watch a movie. Um, but moving right along. Um, so, um, yeah, so just stay safe. Um, be courteous, be kind to your neighbors. I have noticed that when we do go out and people are, it's almost like they haven't seen people in a while and they're like waving and like, it's just, it's like right before Christmas, you know, everybody's really, really nice. And so it's really nice. People are where I am. At least people are not fighting over toilet paper. Um, they're actually lending toilet paper. My wife and I have had the opportunity to help out some neighbors. Uh, we've actually got a new neighbor. We've met a new neighbor, um, and his family. Um, we've been able to, uh, my wife has a, uh, a coworker who is, she's, um, up in age. We'll just say that. Um, and she's living on her own. And so we made her, Shanna, my wife, made her a cat toy because she got a new cat. And uh, we took that over to her place and gave it to her. And we've delivered food over there because um, she's she doesn't want to get out and stuff. Um, so we've, we've had the opportunity to help serve our community um, in some in some really, really good ways. And so... That's what I would say about about this time is that look for those ways, those opportunities to to help others, um, to serve others. Uh, one of the best things you can invest in um, during this time is yourself. Yourself is the best investment you can ever do. And so whether that's, you know, learning a new skill. And, 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 and by learning a new skill, I don't mean day trading or you know, picking up carpentry <laughs> or playing the guitar. Um, I don't know, learn, learning how to have compassion perhaps more um, with people. Um, learning to love people well. Learning to sit and listen to your kids. So learning to sit and listen to your wife. Um, and, and just investing in yourself, in those things. Like maybe you have an insecurity. It's like, you know, I don't want to kind of explore this. And... And really kind of just digging deep. We have the time. And I am by no means a psychologist or, or anything. But, you know, investing in yourself does also, it can mean, you know, picking up the guitar. You know, woodworking. Creating a podcast. You know, those things. Absolutely. But if this time is an anxious time for you, um, sit in that. It's okay. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to be fearful. It's what we do with those things that, that really matter. And so maybe explore those. Read, read some books on that or get online and, and, and read about that. But um, coming out on the back end of this or the, yeah, when this is over, the back end, the front end. The front end has happened, the back end. Um, <clears throat> again, still early here in Colorado. Um, coming out of the back end of this, you know, will you have sat on your couch and, and binged in Netflix and it's over and like, okay, now I'm going to go back to my normal life or will you have something deeper ingrained in you? Pick up, you know, if you're, if you're a Christian, pick up your Bible, read through the Bible. That's one thing I'm doing. I'm reading through the Bible. I'm going to take this time and just plow through the Bible. Um, I've read through the Bible a couple of times. I'm going to read through it again. I'm not a perfect Christian by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I, I, I love the word of God. And it's great. And I love to read through it. Um, speaking of which, I have a new Bible. And 
it's an ESV reader's Bible. I really wanted to go with an NIV reader's Bible, but at the end of the day, the artist in me um, went with the ESV reader's Bible. But there's a there's a company um, uh, that um, put a I got a, a hardback ESV reader's Bible, but they put a cowhide uh, um, leather cover on my Bible, and I love it. So I'm been reading on that every morning. Um, let's see here. I need some coffee. I'm not under the weather. I got a, I've, I've just got a dry cough and some, you know, flu like symptoms. That's all. So I see, see levity. One of the things I've been thinking about during this time and, uh, is just kind of where our nation is, um, financially. And, you know, I, I would love to see America be a nation of savers instead of a nation of consumers. I really do believe that, you know, I have a really good grasp on how um, capitalism works and the economy and all that. And so we do need consumerism. But um, I would, you know, what if during this time the government said, we're going to help people out. But everyone said, "Um, actually, no, we're good. We're good. We've all got three to six months worth of expenses saved and we're all debt free and we're good. And having, having that, this is obviously a a pipe dream for all of Americans to, to be this way. Um, But had we been a nation of savers, um, our government wouldn't need to bail everybody out. They, or give them, you know, relief or whatever. Um, Maybe just the ones that really needed it. And, so, uh, regardless of what you think about Dave Ramsey, the principles are, are there. Uh, Dave, if you don't know who Dave Ramsey is, uh, just Google him. Um, but great, great advice as far as having three to six months worth of, of expenses, you know, saved for a time like this. Um, and, and being debt-free. And if you're debt-free and you have three to six months worth of expenses saved – then you can write out something like this. And I'm not talking about really, really rich people. I'm talking about your middle class people here in America. I mean, our middle class is part of the 1% in the rest of the world. But still, um, yeah, I just, I would love to see our nation be a nation of savers. Um, it would it would be nice. But anyway, I digress. Um, I had a few show notes here. I think that's, I think I've hit everything. Uh, mystery guest is me today. You get stuck with me. Um, the podcast, what it is, it's me bringing on people at the top of their game who are um, m- mostly my starting out with my friends uh, and family. Um, where we are as a nation, coronavirus, you know, I, I'll, I'll speak a little bit to this. At first, you know, reports are coming out. I was like, ah, okay, whatever, the flu, blah, blah. And now my wife and I are like, well, me, my wife, I don't want to speak for her, but um, yeah, we're taking it. We're taking it more seriously. Um, I think in a year we'll have better numbers to crunch and look at and stuff. But you know, I will. I will say this: um, I was hoping to get a a first responder on. I've got a few friends who are doctors, um, but I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna. No, they're they're busy, and uh, and so I'm not gonna try to get one of them on. I may try to get one of them on. Once this has kind of subsided and they've had like six weeks to sleep. Um, my mom was a nurse and uh, a lot of my family's in the medical field. So I do want to do a big shout out to those guys, um, you know, for the hard work they're doing. The nurses, the doctors, you know, the interns, everybody, the police, the fire department, the National Guard, everybody who's contributing, the companies that are contributing, our leadership, you know, in Washington that's, that's doing the, you know, the best they can with, with what they've got. Um, yeah, I just want to give a big shout out to everybody kind of coming together and working really hard, whether it's companies making masks, you know, stopping the production of whatever widget they have and and making a mask or respirators or whatever. Um, I really do believe in a free market that we can, we can actually have the, Hey, look, the creative Liberty to, do these things to stop production and, and really kind of help, you know, we can 
come together and, and help one another. And so I just want to say thanks. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, uh, my wife's heart, my dog's heart, and everyone else's who has uh, cheered you guys on. And for those who have actually uh, been infected, uh, they cheer you on. Thank you so much for your for staying up night after night, working in the ER, uh, working at the hospitals, getting sleep when you can, eating when you can. Um, we we pray and hope that you are also staying safe and well. And uh, so yeah, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you um, to all of our our workers out there on the front lines of all this. So and anyone I forgot about. So, um, so yeah. So with that, I will say to my probably one or two people that are listening to this first episode of this podcast, um, (laughs) um, as a nation, as, as a world, as a nation, as a a community, don't be afraid to ask for help. There's no shame in that. Um, we're going to get through this. We will, um, I think with with much love and grace and levity towards one another, we're going to be okay. You know, we will. We'll, we will get through this. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have today. Oh, I wanted to share one thing with you. I think, let me look. Speaking of grace and levity. So I, wanted to, I just wanted to share this with you. I was reading this this morning in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 12 uh, verse 8 it's Paul and he's talking uh, he's talking to the Lord about this thorn in his flesh and uh, he had been praying pleading with the Lord to take it away from him so I'll start up in verse 8 and he says three times I pleaded with the Lord about this that it should leave me but he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness And then Paul goes on to say, Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So I leave you with that. Um, From a guy who had a big hand in writing a lot of the New Testament, he was weak. Uh, none of us are, you know, strong in our own strength. Uh, we're strong in Christ, and we're stronger in our weaknesses. And right now, our nation's pretty weak. So, this is a great time for us to reflect, to get closer to our Creator, um, to reach out to friends and family, and to love one another well. And uh, that's my my hope and prayer for all of you as we move forward through this. And again, it. In 10 years, this will be a blip on our radar, hopefully. And so with that, I will leave you with uh, this outro. Um, Thanks for listening today. Uh, I wanted to record just one episode, um, and then I'm going to start releasing all of the ones I have recorded. I've got three in the can and more coming. So, again, thanks for listening. Um, This podcast is going to be about people talking about their passions, what they love, and uh, I hope you really enjoy it. I hope you found something insightful out of this. <laughs> Me at my kitchen table in Colorado, just rambling. That's what it feels like. But that's okay. I don't mind. I can I can fill the space. Um, the Creative Liberty Podcast is on most listening platforms. Um, I'm going to have some sponsorships in here. Um, so if you're listening and you want to uh, help sponsor this podcast, uh, reach out to me. Um but like I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, we're sponsored today by Anchor, and it's the online platform that we're using to uh, edit, or not edit, but um, store all of our podcasts and stuff. So, all right, well, that's it. Um, yeah, like I said, we're on most listening platforms already, uh, Spotify, iTunes, uh, maybe iHeartRadio. I'm not sure, but wherever you look or listen, give us a look and listen. So, all right, America, stay strong, stay well. And I will see you on the next podcast.
This has been the Creative Liberty Podcast. This is the outro. This is this is the sponsorship segment. <laughs> this is where your name can go. Uh, take care, America. Love you. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.